Call the no, November 1st meeting of the Amory City Council to order. And the first order of business, call to order. Then the Pledge of Allegiance. Mike, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Careful. You're super comfortable, right? And now the roll call. Marks. Here. Ben Summerin. Here. Thompson. Here. Ben Lercon. Here. Elkin. Here. Banner. Here. Lanham's on Zoom, I think. Yes, here. All present and accounted for. And now the consent agenda items. You all had a chance to look at uh, all of the uh, consent previous meetings. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda items. Motion's been made to accept the consent agenda items. There are second. I second. second it. And seconded. They include the city council minutes from October 4th, the special council on October 18th, the committee of a whole on October 18th, plan commission October 26th, airport commission October 12th, and recycling committee October 11th. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Ordered. First item on the agenda is public comment. Up here? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I guess it's more a question than a comment. Uh, I know the engineers are here, and uh, on the agenda it said there'll be a discussion about the wastewater treatment facility. I'm just wondering if during that discussion, the uh, engineers have put together a detailed analysis about relocating the wastewater treatment plant to another location as required by the DNR. Yes, we'll have to answer that when they come up. We can ask them then. Okay. I don't know either. So, okay. any other public comments? Would Would you identify yourself, please? I I sorry. The first one was Mike Krushak, and I, John Schussman. I live uh, on Donatel Street. Mm -hmm. Um. This is kind of a, I, I looked at the minutes from the last meeting and I believe there needs to be an edit made. Um, according to the agenda item number one, the wastewater treatment plant location discussion from plan commission. Um, I quote from the minutes, uh, this item was moved forward from plan commission after they held a public hearing uh, regarding a zoning ordinance that will be needed before construction can begin. Um, if you look at the minutes from that meeting, uh, Elkin did make the motion, but uh, withdrew the motion. And the new motion was made and seconded by um, Remen Schneider to recommend to council that a new location and cost for the wastewater treat treatment plant be explored and be revisited uh, the ordinance for the buffer zone in the future. So I think that needs to be edited, just making note as um, public comment. Thank you. Anyone else? Don't hold up. Don't cost anything to get your floor in the water. <laughs> hey, hearing none, we'll go on to item number two, Arts, Parks, and Recreation Committee discussion. So I'm Catherine Olson and I am the 
vice chair of the Arts, Parks, and Recreation Committee. And I am going to be reading the letter that you were previously given on behalf of our committee. Back in May, our Arts, Parks, and Recreation Committee was asked by Chad Leonard, who was mayor at the time, to go to all of the Amory Parks and make recommendations for any updates or concerns that we discovered. On June 21st of this year, our committee came to the City Council and presented recommendations regarding the various park areas of the city and concerns and improvements that we felt were needed. The Council was given a copy of those recommendations. To date, our committee has not heard anything formally back from the city on what, if any, of our recommendations are being moved on. We're here today because we are concerned that in listening to the conversation that occurred at the October 18th Committee of the Whole, that the city is now willing to financially support the renovation of the pickleball courts, but yet we have heard nothing about replacing play playground equipment at North Park. This equi equipment is a major safety concern and we listed it in our recommendations to you that this should be a priority item. Our committee is not opposed to updating the pickleball courts. We understand there are many who use those courts. There are also many who use North Park. Many have birthday parties for their children there and then want to use the playground equipment. Camping's now available at North Park, so there are visitors from other cities using the park and equipment, whom we are sure are also stopping and shopping and eating in our community. Our committee did go to the pickleball courts when we reviewed the conditions at South Twin Park. Our committee had been appropriately approached since a part of our responsibilities is recreation about having us review those courts because people who play pickleball informed us of the poor condition of the courts. We did inform a representative from the pickleball group that we had looked at the courts and felt the cracks needed to be filled but that we had many other items from our inspections of the parks that we felt also needed attention. If you do recall, when we did include in our formal recommendation to the council that the cracks needed to be filled in, we did hear that that task was completed. So it's surprising and frustrating to this committee that there are funds available within the city, and yet we have not heard that any of these funds will go to replacing the playground equipment, but instead might be used to repave the pickleball courts. We are wondering what then is the purpose of this committee? We thought it was to make recommendations to the city on direction that should be taken in the area of arts, parks, and recreation. We now feel that this committee is being circumvented. In closing, we would ask that if the city has funds available to support pickleball, that you would also consider using funds to replace the playground equipment at North Park. Other parks as well, but North Park was identified as number one. We have concerns about children playing on unsafe equipment. If a child gets hurt on equipment that we have reported as unsafe, it could result in a liability issue for the city. North Park is a destination for people to come to, People use the pavilion. They have children wanting to play on the equipment. It is utilized frequently in the spring, summer, and fall. Let's keep our parks looking and functioning well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Mahoney, would you care to respond to what's been done uh, at North Park? North Park has just been fixed up as much as we could without spending any money. There was nothing in the budget this year for it so we just kind of patched it together as they know we put screws in what we thought we could do and kind of bolted it back together there are some issues there definitely that are going to arise what are those issues jeff can you be one slide is coming down and there's a rod under it and it's all humped up that needs to be and that needs to be removed well to remove it then you got to it all you know well, I mean, we'd have to put some yeah. kind of a barricade across yeah. there so a child can't walk out there. Uh, you know, whatever you guys want to do. And the electrical? Electrical has been fit. Okay. All done. So back when the um, committee brought these issues originally, I believe we requested that some research be done on how much it would cost to replace the playground equipment. Okay. For one slide. <laughs> no. Is that the only one that needs to be replaced, Jeff? That's the one that needs to be replaced, yes. 
I've noticed that circular one, the small one, is kind of taped together along an edge. The one is pulling apart if you go down it just right. So okay. two slides do need to be replaced. I'm sure that's close to what twenty five. Slides and like you say, all the toys on top are broke. You know they don't work anymore. They used to have a bunch of little car things you could drive, little toys and. So, two things occur to me. First of all, you're the only committee in the history of the city that I'm aware of that has no one from the council represented on your committee. Um, that is an error. Well, I'm not going to assign any blame for it, but uh, you know who picked you. Um, we're going to recommend that uh, I will be appointing Mike Manor to your committee as an ad hoc member, since we can't do anything differently until we do change the resolution. Um, secondly, you do realize that you're an advisory committee. Do. You don't spend money, the council does that. Um, and uh, thirdly, I would tell you that I talked to one of your committee about the possibilities of the Lions Club being involved because the Lions Club have spent have over the course of the years have been very involved with uh, the chalets, the uh, some of the uh, playground equipment. Uh, they've built several of the shelters around and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, that was I, the times that I spent talking to people was were Rob Hendricks. And uh, Rob unfortunately passed away. So I don't personally have a, a knowledge of whether he passed that on to anybody. I tried getting a hold of uh, uh, one of the folks that I know. The other one doesn't. The other one hasn't been on uh, Lions very long. Just but, knowing, uh, so I'll I'll be able to get more information. That that has been at least uh, forwarded to. So in response to that, Dave Bowman, we've talked to, and Dave said. They don't have the money to replace the equipment. They would maybe give a little money, but they have no intention of replacing it. No, no. I think our concern is that now people know that it's being taped together and these little uh, small fixes, and now people are aware of that. So if some child does get hurt down there, then talk about liability. I think our only so, alternative is to take the stuff down, don't you? Why wouldn't you replace it? Because it costs a lot of money that is not in the budget at this point in time. So we don't have, uh, we don't have, you know, everything runs on money. But I guess Catherine's bringing up the point then, how can there be money? And I'm not against the pickleball court. I think it'd be nice to think if both of these things could be done. So how could you justify the pickleball court over this? Because that's not a liability issue at the pickleball court. That's not necessarily true. Oh. If somebody <laughs> falls on a crack at the pickleball court, three pickleball court, uh, you know, uh, there's issues of liability both places. So um, I guess from my standpoint, personally, you know, they play pickleball uh, nine, basically eight and a half months out of the year. Uh, the stuff at the park isn't going to be used now till spring. And we do have some time to uh, at least get some ideas and some prices and so on. Um, and uh, it was suggested again to one of your members that uh, we plan for some handicapped uh, uh, recreational things up there. And I, I encourage them uh, to get prices. And I haven't heard anything back from... Who, who was supposed to get the prices? I asked Joyce to get some prices on equipment. Um, we also, we also have one other person in the community that I've suggested several times to... Uh, in this group uh, to uh, make use of her expertise. And as far as I know, that she's not ever been contacted. Um, and I'll share that with you uh, after. Of which, I'm sorry, do you mean which group? You guys. We only have one other person and it's exactly. Um, so so the, the idea that, you know, that you're not being uh, heard is not correct. It's not true. Um, 
Um, and hopefully with uh, Mike on your committee, we'll have a more direct line. The other thing I noticed is that uh, all the minutes and stuff that we just approved, we don't have any from you guys. And I don't know if you were aware of the fact that you needed to present present your minutes. Say Taylor. Okay. Well, we were never told that. Okay. Well, and we did ask about exactly. a member from the council being on, and we just we weren't ever assigned anybody. Okay. So, well, we will be now. So that's fine. Going forward, let I think uh, we all want to have uh, you know our shoulders behind the wheels at the same time, and uh, I appreciate that this is you know the most comprehensive list I think I've ever seen regarding the parks. Uh, and I know it took a lot of time and effort to to do that. I appreciate that, and we will be working on them as as uh, finances and so on allow. So, but now you'll have a direct line into the into the council. So one of the things that I want to point out would, that would be a difference when we talked about pickleball, there was a very um, specific budget, um, so that there were numbers to deal with. <clears throat> so if we had something that we could look at that says, how much is this? Nobody knows. And so we need to have a, a comprehensive plan, whether it's from, you know, working with uh, Jeff and his team or your recommendations. But if we don't have, um, nobody here is a playground specialist. We'd be happy to do that. And we did ask Jeff, and Jeff's been busy. We did ask him. He looked up the one slide at one point and said seven thousand dollars. If we need to, have, when he has time to break it down into what a total cost would, that would be wonderful. And I think that's that's what we would need, and I sure. think everybody else would need in order to be able to say. And and we, we do have, have money. Goal. We do have money in the budget for parks and recreation. Not nearly enough to take care of everything that you identified, sadly, but uh, as we prioritize things and, uh, you know. And we we said, didn't realize that. I guess our, our main concern was the equipment at the park. And so we uh, were hoping that tonight we would hear that that could at least be considered as well as the pickleball court. I think uh, I think we're close enough to the end of the budget that we probably are won't, we really can't get anything to happen till spring now anyway. Um, um, could I'd like to bring something up. I did a... Uh, drive over to the pickleball cart this afternoon. And I also drove over to North Park, just by the North Park equipment. And the pavilion that was on here that said that they're uh, the electrical fuse box. All of that has been replaced, just like Jeff said. Pickleball court, I actually got out and walked in the middle of pickleball court and I would fall if I tried to play pickleball. And I plan on playing someday. But I, it is a safety hazard. I did go to the North Park. Um, I did see the issues and everything, but I'd like to see, I'd like to see numbers. I'd like to see, it's like um, the mayor said, that statement that you gave us with all the recommendations is excellent. But if we could have some follow-up, I don't know if once we receive this moving forward, then Jeff could respond back to this or we could have, maybe a third party involved. Maybe we need someone to do like an outsider, maybe the mayor or someone else go to look at the recommendations. So you don't have just one side and then, you know, two different sides. So a thought has occurred to me, are there any grants or anything that we could write to try to help get some funding for this kind of project? I did look in, up a few different grants and I actually had experience with one at a former municipality that I work for, it's a Kaboom grant. Mm -hmm. And that's more for um, handicapped. Mm -hmm. I did look into that and I think it's only $15,000. Okay. But it's something, mm -hmm. you know, and there's other grants. Walmart gives out grants, there's- but, And I think accessibility was mm -hmm. one of the keys that was there's identified by this group as well. So yeah. so I think I think if, you know, we focus in on the handicap portion of it, I think yeah. it should be. I agree. Jeff, I've looked into some of those too. So, so yeah. how involved would it be to, to remove those two slides that are the only one with the post sticking up in the... Okay. And then what, what kind of expense would be involved in just 
barricading somehow that can't be removed by a child. Picking up a nice piece of plywood so that looks halfway decent. It's kind of bolted to there for now until we decide what we're going to do. I think it needs to be something more than plywood myself. You got to make sure somebody's not going to get hurt. I don't know if welding something on is the right thing to do, but metal is not, you can't weld anything to that metal. Okay, can we put some kind of metal on there with some kind of hasps on the end that bolt on? If the slide is bad, why don't we just take it down? Well, there's three slides. There's four slides on it right now. The tall one, the real short one, and then the small curly, and the long one with the post. Which so, one is faulty? The long one with the post at the bottom that's coming up, and the small circular one. Those are the two I'd like to see taken down as soon as possible and get something up there to barricade that area. Yep. So what I'm kind of gathering is, is we've already made our decision that this money is going to go to the pickleball court, correct? Absolutely. So um, just remember, you just said uh, playground equipment's not used for the next, what, six months? What else will the pickleball court be used for the next six months, too? Takes about that long to get it to back into shape. It couldn't start till this fall. So and Patty is going to look into see if we can get some more grant monies for that. Oh. I had one question when we were looking at the pickleball court that it was going to continue. Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. It was going to continue to right. crack. And so regardless of what happens to it, you put the money into it. Where we were looking to move it to someplace. No, I'll dig down, put a new base in there. So if we rip it all out and put a new base in there, it should hold. No guarantees, of course, but it should. Thank you. Okay, so other than some work for Jeff, <laughs> or anything else we need to. Um, Rick, if I could ask a question. Um, so she just mentioned that they were discussing moving the pickleball court elsewhere. What I don't recall hearing anything about that. What what is what was the thought on that? If that, I recall, it was to North Park, right? Correct. Either to eliminate the tennis courts and put it there, or to build something different. We were thinking, extending onto the tennis courts. Oh, yeah, yeah. But take use the what's tennis courts as part of the pickleball. We as, that was my understanding anyway. Sorry. Yeah, you do it. What the initial thought was with pick moving the pickleball park courts to North Park was utilizing the space because the basketball court is right there, correct? Because it moving that position over on the other side of the skate park. So it'd be on the east side of the skate park towards the playground equipment, extending the ten off the tennis court, pickleball courts. That was one envision with the former mayor. Then that way everything is down there. Yes, it makes congestion, but at the same time, visibility. People would see it. Campers would know where it is. And you'd have one main attraction in town. You have the park, you have pickleball courts, you have all that right there, and people going through town that are going to get groceries that are here visiting, shopping downtown could do that too and see it's here. Right now, right. being over by the beach, not too many people know where it is unless you're looking for it or know where to mouth. There's no wayfinding signs. There's no nothing to know where they where it is. So that was one plan that came up in discussion. So thank you. Well, I guess, you know, with that said, I think that, you know, we perhaps should do some due diligence and determine if that's even a possibility at North Park. Yes. Park. If we're going to be putting $80,000 into pickleball courts. I want to make sure that that's going to be the right place. And should we be doing it someplace different? I don't know. Well, I can tell you that it's been talking that various things have been talked about uh for north park uh the last one that i recall was uh the vfw wanted to put a monument up there and the popular feeling at the time was that north park is loaded about as heavily as it can be with uh recreational 
because we not only have the ones that are aforementioned, but we also have a uh, a uh, Frisbee Golf that uses a, a vast amount of the park. Uh, the Amory Women's Club has a couple, at least one event or maybe two up there every year. Um, they're just, once you take that open space away, it's gone forever. You never get it back, ever. And that was suggested, there was a suggestion that came up from, uh, well, how about putting it at York Park? Well, that too, I, I covet that area. I didn't have anything to do with getting it, but there are very, very few cities anywhere in the country that have a wild air life area like North Park does in the city of Amory. And I believe that there's probably not a single day of the year that there aren't multiple users of that. Uh, so I would personally be really protective of that open space in both North Park and in York Park. Um, I guess we can we can discuss it, um, but I believe time is of the essence on doing the pickleball thing because uh, pickleball folks uh, volunteered to be done on November 1st. Lucky them, it's 20 degrees outside. Um, but but uh, in order to have that ready for spring, we need to get the work going and get done on that. I tend to agree, Patty. I tend to agree um, because I think we need to look at the alternative uh, Jeff, how confident are you that the ground underneath the current pickleball courts is the part of the problem as far as the surfacing? I would be pretty confident because you're right on a swamp. Okay. Yeah. You're on the swamp, unless you dig down a long ways and put in backfill of some sort, you're going to have the same issues. So we're going down three feet. We're going to dig three feet of it out and put recycle blacktop in there and crushed gravel. And but it's just, three feet even or not? Yeah, it's not traffic, you know, it should hold up. You know, that's what all they did on 90% of Main Street until they got to the real wet spots. If you look at Harriman Avenue from the entire distance along uh, Soldier's Field, that's all that whole section and has been done in sections with uh, a couple feet dug out and a couple feet of base put in along with the cloth. And uh, that's, that was engineered. I think that's been relatively successful. Uh, any part that was, that's been worked on is in good shape yet there. So. How many parking spots are there on North Park? Down by the by the tennis courts. And sorry to put you on the spot. I don't a know. Dozen, ten, ten to a dozen. And how many are at the current pickleball site? Uh, in the parking lot? Yeah. It's probably fifteen to sixteen, I would say. Mm -hmm. There are that many. It's quite large. Plus the street. Plus street parking. And that wouldn't be an option for street parking, but there's street, you know, through North Park. I, I mean, I agree with Rick. I mean, I do feel like North Park is a little too congested to handle something like this. Parking is going to be an issue. It's, I don't disagree that North Park is probably not the answer. Um, there's going to be just as much engineering that's going to need to go in in North Park as that it's going to be any place because North Park is also on a swamp. Um, I mean, I personally feel confident um, replacing the pickleball courts where they are currently. I'm just because I didn't know what the what the thoughts were as to where it could be located. I don't really think that North Park is an answer because we need to keep as much open space as we have to. And that park in no way can handle the parking and the traffic that's going to go through it if it is going to be used for, pick, or, you know, if we're perhaps for pickleball course there i don't believe so that's my that's my thoughts i didn't think your park could be no it can't not without it can't be used without not without taking a 
paying the DNR a whole bunch of money back. Anybody else? And then at the plate. Moving on to item number three, wastewater treatment plant location. Eric, you're on. Uh, Eric Kingsgard, Jeremiah went with SCH. We've been your designers on the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we did meet with the committee of the whole. Uh, which was obviously all of you. Uh, there have been some developments since that meeting. Uh, some residents have reached out to the DNR and had conversations with them. And uh, and then we've had conversations with the DNR as well. Something that came out of that was that the DNR feels like the city does need to explore what the costs of uh, a relocation of the plant would be and the impact to the user rates to uh, share with the residents and provide that information and, and go from there. Um, so I, I guess I don't know what you want uh, else from us. We have we have said kind of throughout at the Planning Commission meeting at the community whole that that's something that, that we can do. Uh, there are a lot of variables, you know, a lot of question marks with uh, where it would be and you know how do you get from a to b uh so but we can do that we can pull together some some estimated costs of of a relocation i don't think it's an option not to is it if the no no we said we would yeah and i think that it's probably you know you're gonna have to use best guess um as far as location only because that's what we would have to do so you know looking at Possible locations, and it also then tells us that you know acquisition of land and, and right of ways to get there, or whether the existing plant stays in place and it's an addition, or that becomes a, a a pumping station to because that's where everything goes now, which would make some sense to me. I don't see how we cannot do this, at least as far as find out not just i guess i would ask for not just um cost <clears throat> but um you know possible disruption for uh, acquired right away or i don't know if it's condemnation or whatever it would take you know because uh, you'd have to run wastewater lines that wherever it ends up plus time you know i think that that would be the essence for me is Cost is one thing, but time is another. If we are more or less on borrowed, borrowed time, thanks to Jeff's team there that is keep doing a really good job of keeping it working past its estimated uh, life, then I think time is, is pretty critical for us. So uh, do we need to make a motion to engage not, with not you yet. to do that? Not yet. <laughs> okay, I still think we need to do it. Yes. Is, is there is there still going to be the same five hundred foot buffer around a pumping station like that? Uh, not around a pumping station. No. No. There'd be a buffer around the new location. Right. Um, and a new location is different than existing, isn't it? Uh, the separation distance is the same. Oh, it is. Um, <laughs> but the process is different in that for an existing location. Um, the city has to to make reasonable attempts to to gain agreement, whereas for a new location, you would have to gain agreement from existing residents within within five hundred feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the I guess one other thing that I was thinking about is how does that affect the the licensing and permitting, and and um, you know, is it is it a different level of of uh, requirement for a new location compared to upgrading the existing? It potentially would be, and and that would be you know. So if we if we did go to um, if we we're going to go to a different location, we would require um, at least modifying or resubmitting the facility plan. Part of that process then would be to give DNR um, to give us the planning effluent limits for wherever we determine that outfall location. Uh, but it would be a new outfall uh, 
costs and and you know, kind of a blank slate for DNR in terms of, of calculating those. Uh, Is there any guarantee DNR even let you move out there with the permit and everything? Um, I I wouldn't say guarantee. I mean, you yeah. you essentially you would need to, to gain the DNR's approval. <laughs> yeah. Do you have an estimated timeline on how it, long it would take you to put together estimates for us? Just so that we, because we have constituents that are concerned about it. So just so we know about how long it's going to take you to gather all of that information. I would say, when is the next committee of the whole meeting? Is there, that's the only one this month. Um, we'd want to bring it to the committee. First, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. So the fifteenth might be tight mm -hmm. to get the information put together. But I'd say the next committee, the whole meeting for sure. The the like December meeting. The, sure. the next council meeting, December December first. So if you wanted to go to committee first, it would be the December. Which meeting. would be mid December. Mm -hmm. So I'd say yeah. If we wanted to go to council, I think we could make the December council meeting or the December committee of the whole meeting, depending on what, you know, I think, process the council would be fine, the... uh -huh. I think the council would be fine, wouldn't you? So you... The order of operations is it has to go to committee first, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We can have a special... Do we have a special? ...meeting yes. following. Special meeting, yeah. Special... I think that's probably our best bet is to... So that's December. Mm -hmm. December, we're talking then. Mm -hmm. Mid-December, but we would follow with a special council meeting. Keep oh, things in order. And we could do committee right before our December meeting. Oh, December, so December 2nd or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. In other communities that have had these issues come up, has there ever been a buyout situation where, you, where the community has bought out the homeowners? that are in the affected area that are dissatisfied with the plans that we have in place now? Yeah, I, I think there's, um, you know, there's been situations where, where cities have purchased property. Um, I know when I was in uh, New Richmond, we had um, uh, the establishment of this uh, buffer zone. In that case, the property owner donated the property to the city for creation of a of a park to kind of protect that uh, buffer zone. So there's certainly been different means that have been employed to, um, you know, to put that land in city control, I guess, in, in so on. Is that something we'd be willing to look at is to buy out? I think we need to I see how much, we need to, we need to have this finished first. I think we need to have, yeah, we need to, okay. we definitely need to do that. But it could but. be certainly part of discussion. But we need to keep it in the back of our minds, too, that that could very well be the only option we have. Right. Depending on what the cost is going to be and what all it's going to involve to have it move to a different location. No, that's, I guess that's why we have to find out. <laughs> One thing that you didn't discuss either was the cost to the user rates, too. Mm. Yeah. So that that's something that yes. that in discussions with the DNR, it's, it's uh, provide uh, a cost for a relocation and the impacts to the user rates. So that's, that's good. And then provide that information to all the public. So would you share your suspected costs of providing the extra uh, study? Yeah, so uh, this would be just time allotted, you know, or, or needed for Jeremiah and our, our colleagues to to pull together costs and look at things. And we're not doing a full analysis. We're simply looking at, you know, what's our best guess at a new location and to get there and everything. And Jeremiah and I were just talking about it. It's in the two to four thousand dollar range. Um a lot of effort that we do a little I say little, but uh different tasks we do for the city we do on a on a time material basis uh that would basically on call with a general services agreement. That's something that we could we could take on. 
So that would include not only the infrastructure itself, but the land to get there and the purchase land and so on. So we'd have a yeah. pretty good, pretty accurate snapshot. Yeah, and the, the land to get there. Um, so we, we don't know where it's going yet. We'll have to choose a location, you know, um, because the airport has been south of the airport. Yeah, and, and you know, no, unless there's some. We have no else. idea. Yeah, they will have to make an assumption. We'll, that, we'll and, have to pick a spot. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. A best guess. Mm -hmm. And and you know, if we can find something that um, you know has a ability to have a 500 foot buffer with no residents in it, that's. Mm -hmm. That's the best choice. Yeah. Out of forty, I guess I don't know. We'll have to look you know, how that mm -hmm. that map adds up. But but then yeah, to get from A to B, meaning the existing plant, the pump from there to the new location, um, you know, we we try to utilize existing right of way, uh, existing streets and property owned by the or the city has rights to. Um, but there's potential that we would have to look at, um, you know, acquiring easements. Or property along the way too. No. Well, that would all involve uh, the you move it to an alternate location like the south of the airport. Then we would have to go underground mm -hmm. to get all the suits. Everything would have to be pumped under there. So there's going to be all road construction. And all, so all will all that be included too for the cost because that's going to be. Yeah, we'd have to again make an assumption on what what's that route going to be to get to you know a new site okay. that we pick, and then yeah, what are the costs of, of installing that pipe? Which, to your point, is going to include surface restoration of what you know whatever it is that we're going underneath. Okay. Well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, does this go towards a clean water fund funding? Can we use that cost for this study towards those dollars? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I ask a question. Sure. So my understanding is, is that the plan is to bring back to the committee of a whole a this information prior to it going to the city council. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking that you would have a committee of the whole meeting before your next city council meeting in December. That's about a month. Yes. <laughs> your analysis. So what we need is a motion to spend the two to four thousand dollars. We'll make that motion that we do that. I second it. Motion's made and seconded to spend the uh, proposed two to four thousand dollars to uh, further the study of a alternate location and bring that back to the December committee as a whole then forwarded to the December council meeting, special meeting. Uh, the, the, the cost of, uh, we're not going to look at permitting or legal or any design solutions <laughs> the cost of, of construction and development. Okay. And user, and then, user rate. User rates, yeah. Any further questions? Did you guys do any wastewater treatment plan involvement? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. You have to give it a little second. We got to give you a second. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, she's voting on the wrong the side. Right she isn't as fast as it used to be. Uh -huh. Thanks, Eric. Thank Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay, item number four, approval of Class A combo license for Family Dollar. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone here from Family Dollar? I doubt it. I think all their corporate offices are in Lake Virginia. I, uh, that's great. Be before we get a, a motion, but well, maybe we'll just wait for a motion. Are they going to start selling liquor? I didn't know Family Dollars sold liquor. They apparently do. The license they're applying for is the same one that like the gas stations have. Hmm. It, okay. Interesting. Where they're located. 
-hmm. You can buy beer and booze at Dick's. You knew that. Buy it at Marathon. And there's a liquor store right on the other corner. Or right, they share a parking lot with Family Dollar. Yep. Close, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have another? I don't know. This is Wisconsin. <laughs> I uh, need it. No. <laughs> My uh, concern with this is that I don't shop at uh, there very often personally, but numerous times in the last six or eight months when I have shopped there, there have been times that I've pulled up and it's closed for three hours because they don't have any help. Or I've been in there when there's one person in the store and they're stocking shelves. And mm -hmm. I guess I personally question whether they have a secure enough facility to and enough help to um, adequately provide uh, security for selling liquor. Um, I agree. I don't think they do because most times that I've been in there, to stop in for something. I mean, there's times you can't even get down the aisles because they don't have them stocked and stuff put away. And there's one person in the store trying to stock it, but they could be in the far corner in the back of the store. Nobody knows what's going on in front or how quickly it could get up there right. if somebody's walking out with something. That just um, clarification, the class A combo license, that's just beer and wine, correct? It's liquor, liquor. Liquor, liquor and yeah. everything. Okay. Yep. It says liquor. Everything with kerosene. <laughs> Do they currently hold a license? They don't currently hold the license at all, no. correct? No. Do we have a limit on how many of these we can give out? Yeah. Nope. nope. So this doesn't impact any other businesses. Oh, okay. So it's it's different. Okay, I'm sorry. It would be a package license, more or less, for off sale. That's all it is. Yeah, it's off sale for sure. <clears throat> away. Yeah. Sorry. Away as in away from the. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I don't think we need it personally. Huh? Your concerns make me hesitant. Well, I. I don't have any concerns. I guess I, I uh, the last time we voted on g giving wholesale licenses away was uh, for the gas stations. And the question still remains, even though we are Wisconsin, how many liquor licenses do we need? And one of the arguments was, well, it's convenient for the, at the gas station. I said, you know, why not give Marianne's little lambs a liquor license then? <laughs> dad, dad picks the kids up at night. They can buy a bottle of hooch to go home with. They don't need to stop twice, you know. I just think we have more than enough places. And if they, if these folks can provide us with some stability, or the picture of stability that says that we're going to be here and we're going to have the same manager more than two weeks in a row. I'm not, I, uh, you know, I don't know I that we need it, but on the other hand, I wouldn't deny it either. But no, I think the only, the issue would be for me, just what, what Mike and others have brought up that sometimes there's not enough people in that, in that building to adequately manage um, a shelf of alcohol. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be my bigger concern. And since there's no one here from this establishment to, you know, give us information, I I would move to deny it. I would second that denial. Motion's been made and seconded to deny the application uh, for the Family Dollar Class A combo license. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Last minute Sarah got in. Yeah. Okay. Motion is denied. However, when we send, do we normally send a notification back to them that their application has been denied? I, I would put something in there that says this is the reason that we that we voted to deny so i think it's, it's helpful to do that otherwise yeah. they don't know do we normally when we deny somebody do we give them the reasons sure. we do. okay 
This will be the first letter, right? Ever for denial? I've yeah, said, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Um, item number five is a hotel study proposal from Hotel R and D. You got that in your packets. Um, this is this is recommended to us from Committee of the Whole to approve. And the cost was to be ten thousand dollars, I think, mm -hmm. which does not need a, a budget amendment or anything like that because of the dollar value. I'd move to accept the approval from the committee of the whole to do this study. I'll second that. Motion's made and seconded to uh, proceed with the hotel study proposal uh, forward us from the committee as a whole from Hotel R&D. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. There. Thank you, sir. She's quicker now. <laughs> that was an anticipatory. Yeah, aye. he was getting hit. <laughs> Um, item number six is airport lease update. Mm -hmm. You want to speak to that, Patty? Well, yeah, this was also brought to your attention from Committee of the Whole, and there were changes made in there. And I think, our, your, if you remember, one of the airports, airport lease people there were, the, were at the meeting, mm -hmm. and he kind of explained why the changes were done. So they're pretty self explanatory. Um, in regards to, um, you know, the private well, we, we do need to have a, um, a permit for that. And, mm -hmm. and valid pilot's license, it said should. Mm -hmm. It wasn't shall, it should. Right. And, that was and there was a good description of why that was, because of some, um, if you have a powered parasail or something like that, that doesn't require it, that, that still fits into the requirements for the leasing a building so that that helped that a lot yes because he makes sense otherwise explain that so yeah. yeah this all came from the airport committee and it was their recommendation to make these changes to the lease um, <clears throat> also a discussion of repairing um, blighted property around the hangar i think that right there was if it's not maintained by the leasee the airport manager, who in this case is Jeff, he's also the public works director, he maintains a right to have the area repaired and the lease be filled. So if there's something that's, you know, could affect somebody else who's next door or, mm -hmm. you know, wreck the neighbor's lease or lease property, which is their hangar, then Jeff can be deemed. And a person. lot of that just came yeah. from, we had some people that just weren't pulling the grass and cleaning up care. the hangers. And the trees, yeah, the exactly. limbs trees and up. those types of things. So that's what just came out of airport. And there's just changes to that lease for that reason. So, And I did see one more change in there. We need to add you as a mayor. Not yes. So <laughs> just going to just gonna bring that up. A. Make a motion to accept the lease agreement or lease, yeah, lease update for lease agreements. Is there a second? A second it. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the <clears throat> airport lease updates as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're good. Third. Item number seven, possible sale of city property, parcel IDs as such, uh, basically is Soldier's Field. Um, this was talked about at, uh, at Planning Commission, brought to Planning Commission and uh, recommended that It'd be forwarded to council. Um, basically, we have an offer to purchase for 
Soldier's Field with some subtractions. Um, I don't know. We don't. Taylor, you don't have anything you can put on the screen for that that uh, picture of the land, do you? It's in the. I think it's in the packet. It's in the packet. Yeah, we're down to the end. getting there there we go all right thank you all right so that's the portion that in red is the preliminary lot lines and uh it's still not not uh, totally complete. Uh, the discussion was that the the access road that's on the south side of Soldiers Field would be um, probably have to be turned into a into a city alley, so that it could be done properly, so we can maintain it, and so that we could plow snow, but so that the residents from South Street that uh, back in the back of their lot uh, it comes up against that access road so that they'd have uh, permanent ability to use that access road. Uh, there's some some uh, other lines there that you see. The offer to purchase uh, was contingent on the buyers uh looking at the environmental and and property study that we did two years ago uh to be assured that uh that the the ground would actually support what they want to do uh i know that there was some consideration by uh, both planning commission and city council folks that uh wondered if that would be possible but uh that's uh that's on the buyer. They have the information. And so I don't know that we we have an offer to purchase. I don't Yeah. And I think it had on there November 10th was when he had to respond by. Okay. That's what it looks like. So so I don't know if we need to make a motion to approve it. Just this is just basically for information. Yeah. So We'll know by the 10th of November whether they think this building is possible or whether it's a no-go. Okay. Any, anybody got any questions about that for what we know? Okay. All right. Item number eight is a 2023 budget am amendment. Um, this This budget amendment takes $58,000 from the 2023 police budget, uh, which is money that basically we have because we didn't have a, we didn't have uh, three or four salaries for a good portion of the year. And uh, we do have the uh, need to uh, do the pickleball courts and uh, those uh, funds could be diverted to that place so it's uh not costing any more money it does not come out of the police budget from uh from their operation standpoint uh it's money that would normally go back into the uh budget as uh, a fund balance if we uh, didn't appropriate it so uh that's what it's for this will will pay the um estimate for the black topping of the pickleball courts. It does not cover Jeff's uh, uh, folks, uh, the work uh, that, that's proposed to do to bring that those pickleball courts up to uh, what we think are going to be uh, a good standard that will last for a long period of time. Uh, but it does cover the black top and uh, at least get it to the point where it can be ready in the spring. Um, I hate to say this to April, but one of the other publications in the county, uh, I think, is coming out with a with a some kind of a of a splash uh, opening up new pickleball courts up on Highway Eight. They're a for profit pickleball uh, um, 
whatever. They built a building, built, you know, place for pickleball people. Yeah. Um, and I, it's, you know, again, Bob has been very vocal about uh, the being the fastest growing sport in the United States. And I think it still holds that distinction. So I think the expense is well justified to do that. Um, not at the expense of the North Park, but uh, uh, we just have a unique opportunity to do that at this time that uh, next year we probably won't have that ability. So um, so it's my recommendation that we approve this uh, budget transfer. Yes. Sure. You never get the money back, man. <laughs> Since I've been discussing with you about the Axon contract that we have to do right yes. now. Yes. Um, are we still going to be able to do that? Because they are they sent me some new paperwork today on it, but I didn't get a real good chance to look at it because I got here so late. Um, but I would still like to do $50,000 down on that program because they also sent me another list today of going instead of five years to 10 years. And I have a few questions of what they sent me. So that'll be a discussion for another day, but there was more, more than $58,000 that was anticipated to be left over. So uh, we're not strapping you down to nothing, no. <laughs> Just so keeping your eye in the water, I know. That's, that's your job. That you betcha. Thank, thanks for that. Also, um, they had mentioned... It, once it is re uh, refinished or surfaced and they're using the new pickle court, we need to look at having proper signage. Yeah, and and that'll be Street. Um, signage, you mean on the court itself or getting oh, to the court? Getting to yes. the court. Refinding stuff you yeah. need. Several areas in the city. Yeah, and we do have, I mean, that's part of another line item in the budget mm -hmm. to do those kinds of things. But yes, I totally agree with that, I think. We do need that, so. Sarah? Yes. Are you good? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right. Would I'll you... actually make a motion to approve the budget amendment. I'll second that. Motions made and seconded to transfer $58,000 from the police budget to the parks budget. All those in favor, by roll call. Marks. Yes. Van Summeren. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Elkin. Yes. Manor. Yes. Flanham. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, that at last gets us to the end. I'm pretty surprised we made it in an hour anyway. <laughs> In, I make a motion to adjourn. Second it. Motions made and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. aye.